You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Holy carp. (laughs) I wasn't sure if I was going to get all my clicking and button pushing done. (sighs) Hey, everybody, guess what? It's a -a 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 -
it was a blue plaid pleated skirt say that three times fast that 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 and um i wore it from kindergarten to sixth grade because the the hem length kept going up <laughs> and mom just kept moving the button out because it was a skirt that my auntie had sent to me from new york and mom didn't have the heart to tell her that it was way too big around the waist for me so you know she pinned it up did a little sewing on the sides and then she moved the button and we just kept taking out the sides and moving the button back to where it was supposed to be so yeah from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade i wore the same blue plaid pleated skirt and bobby socks <laughs> Okay, if you want to give me static, I'm over here on the RLM. That's where I pretty much pay attention to those that are static in me. Because trying to keep track of all of the other places that would be static in me kind of makes me a little on the crazy -er side. So, over here in the RLM, I see Barman right up top. Hey there, Barman. Thank you ever so much. You are the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Cowboy Tech is over here. Hey, Cowboy. Long time no see since you've been in here right off the get-go. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? He rules with kind of a lackadaisical fist. <laughs> I mean, he might thump his computer desk from time to time, but you got to really do something bad to get Grimmy fired up. Just saying. Grimmy, don't, Grimmy just don't get all fired up over here, so... I think Rob prefers no sweater. <laughs> Just saying, cowboy. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Hi, Moose Girl. I hope you're feeling better, sweetheart. You know what? How about a nice hot Epsom salt bath? And if you have some eucalyptus oil, before you put the Epsom salt in your bath water, put it like three or four drops and let it kind of sit and, and work into that Epsom salt before you put it in. That way you don't get burnt because that oil will burn you. And uh, just have a nice long, you know, and if you have some lavender oil, put a couple of drops of that on there. You know, like two Epsom or two eucalyptus and two lavender. And that will... It will help pull all of the achy out of your body. You got to do a cup of Epsom salt though. And it'll pull all the achy out and it will relax you and it will clear your breathing passages. It'll be wonderful, sweetheart. Trust me. And I'll be sitting here going, I'm taking a bath, you know, just because Moose is and, and it's kind of a, yeah. <laughs> I'm living vicariously through Moosey's bath to get her to feel better because darn it all moosey you just need to feel better honey i also see the lovely kate is here hey kate how you doing lady i'm glad you liked that video i saw that over on the the real liberty media facebook page and i thought oh let's check this out and i really i love the words uh, you know the the music part mm, you know i could i could deal with it but i love the words in any case, uh, let's see. Asmo is here. Hey there, Mr. Asmodeus Asmo. How you doing, honey? Hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous evening. I also see Beth Z is in the house. Hey, Beth. How are you doing, hon? As well as Chalcedony, who is the strong silent type. I rarely see Chalcedony chit-chat. Must be doing that when I'm sleeping. I also see Chloe E. -E, -E. She's got the E E going on. I wonder if he gave her one of those little pinwheel things and let her hang out the car window. If she'd go, wee, 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 because I do. <laughs> My daughter and I both did that one time. All kind of people just looked at us like, y'all are weird. And we were laughing. We had a good time. Of course, we also did the, uh, that's a whole other story. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's right, Rob Works. A little ginger wouldn't hurt either. A little bit of ginger to help you along. Like maybe one drop if you have ginger oil. If you don't have ginger oil, eh, you know, if you have some powdered ginger, it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit, a little bit of that in the... You'd be a spicy moosey. <laughs> oh, it sounds like we're making moosey stew. <laughs> Oh, hi, 
IB Don C. I see you over here, hun, as well as Java, 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 Java. Doctor Two is in the house, and looky there, JJ's is also logged in. Hey there, you Scottish feller, you. And Juana Taco is here. Mmm, sounds lovely. But I think with the beans and rice and and stuff that I've been having, I don't need any extra fuel. Um, <laughs> Hi, Meister Brower Party, dude. And P. Bunyan. Hey, sweetie. I've been checking out some of the stuff you've been posting over on Instagram. You have some of the coolest pictures. I, I, I just don't do much on there. My granddaughter got me started, and I kind of, I'm a lurker following my granddaughter. That's pretty much the extent of what I do over on Instagram. Um, rain is in the house. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Huh. One of these days I'll learn to walk and talk like a regular lady, I will. <laughs> I also see RLM Fluky is here, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. And Rob Works, who fired up that bubbler, and he's got a pervy mind. <laughs> but that's okay, we wouldn't want Rob any other way. Thank you, Rob, for firing up the bubbler. And trust no one is here, hey, dude, he's the Bitcoin bazillionaire of the room. Woohoo! Woohoo! And BTC Bob is in the house. Hey, Bob, 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 Bob. Cal Colfax 101. I think I know who that is. That's Ninson Dubois, but he's away. That's okay. Dakota is in the house. He's way up north, and it's very cold up there. I also see Dima in the house, as well as Frumpy and Kozu and Poxified and Pon... Pom -po pon sauce are both logged in, but they ain't. They're away. Slim Jim Flim is here. Slim Jim, did you stub your toe earlier? I see you freebeacon.com and what else did you share, hun? I saw you shared a few things, and I think one of them I actually oh SoundCloud, crayon droids destroy all. I'm gonna have to check that shit out later. Um, Grimmy, you don't Instagram? I do. And you know the only reason I do is because my granddaughter made me sign up because she wanted to have a friend on Instagram. And it's like, okay. Because <laughs> you know I am kind of a soft touch when it comes to the grandbabies, don't you know? <laughs> grandbabies and fur babies. You know, there's something about they, they just look at me with those eyes and I just go, okay. <laughs> I'm a softie. Okay, I also see the cuddly one, Teddy. See, that's quite appropriate for talking about being such a softie. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the guy that did my awesome intro. Thank you once again, the amazing Phantom. So, what am I going to do now? Because <laughs> I've spent the I seriously have spent the day training learning about spreadsheets and I I know how to do spreadsheets and stuff but I hate doing operating uh, system reports and data entry and uh, and having to learn how to do all those corporate reports and crap it's like ew ack, ack. I wish someone would take my training for me so I don't have to do that shit and I know Circles Circles said she would take it for me, but then, you know, when I would need to know how to do these things, I would not. And then I would fumble, fuck something up. There's your first F-bomb so early in the show. And next thing you know, oh, hey, you know, this may not be a bad thing because I could get fired out of the deal. <laughs> I don't know that I want to put that out there into the universe just yet. Okay. Let's see. Where do I want to go first? Hmm. I did put a couple of things in my pocket prior to. Oh, and Grim, I did want to tell you too. I did download Waterfox and I like it, but it wouldn't import over the stuff from Opera. I don't know if I didn't know. I mean, it took all my Firefox stuff, but it I couldn't I couldn't tell it to import from Opera as well. So <sighs> I'm going to have to just save some of that stuff to like a file on my computer and then I can, oh well. That's for another day. I don't feel like it today. So, let's see. Where do I want to go? I have so many things here that are just kind of, mm, 
hmm, but I'm not real sure which ones I want to go to or not. Let me see. Is anybody else putting any fun stuff? Oh, that damn flu shot. God. Yeah, I heard a, a commercial for that this morning on the radio, and they were saying, come on down and get your flu shot so that you don't have to worry about getting the flu this year. And the first thing that ran through my mind was, that's not even 10% effective. Why the hell? And it was, you know, it was a pharmacy that was advertising it. And to me, that is, number one, false advertising. And they should be sued for fraud and all kind of other fun shit. And um, then they should, you know, if someone gets sick from it, then they need to get... Yeah, I do opera, though, Grim. Ha, ha. Okay, that's as much opera as I'm going to do. <laughs> That's that's not really good opera. Mm, okay. Oh, their deaths follow the warning given by a CDC doctor who said this year's disastrous flu shot may be responsible for the deadly flu epidemic sweeping the country. You think? Gee, I wonder if the CDC owns the patent on that vaccine. They own the patent to so many, don't you know? Which is why, you know, they own the patent for the Zika virus which is why they wanted you all to go out and get a inoculation for it because hey they own the patent they make some money off of your ass yes and yes rob it is waging war against people this is world war three you guys they don't have to drop bombs for world war three although there will be shots fired because yeah they are shooting us up left and right those that are standing in line to have the shot. Okay. Mm well, you know what? Ah, here we go. This is one that, that brought a smile to my face. It's from last week. And I believe it was Cowboy Tech that actually shared it. Um, from the activistpost.com, journalist Ben Swan is returning to Dash Cryptocurrency. Booyah! I love Ben Swan. I really do. And I was really concerned for him um, when everything went dark last year about this time. Well, 1st of February of last year. Because um, I thought, ooh, he had just started really poking the Pizzagate thing. And uh, then all of a sudden he went dark and it's like, did they threaten his family? Total douches. I mean, there are enough douches in this world that I think we pretty much know what a douche is. We don't need to have any more examples of it. So can we please start disposing of some of these douches out here? Mm. Oh, well. Nearly a year of silence on social media, Jur uh, journalist Ben Swan is preparing to make his triumphant return to the popular Dash cryptocurrency. On February 1st of 2017, the award-winning journalist Ben Swan went dark on his social media accounts on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere, and uh, they were all suddenly deactivated. Swan is a well-known local journalist at CBS 46 in Atlanta, as well as a viral internet sensation for his reality check investigative reports. Swan's reality check reports began to garner attention around the 2012 U.S. selection and have continued to gain millions of views while questioning the corporate lame-ass propaganda system narrative. Prior to his disappearance, Swan had been under attack by much of that same clap media, as well as left-leaning media, which supported Schittlery, for his now notorious reality check segment on the controversial Pizzagate theory. During the segment, Swan draws attention to what he sees as curious aspects of the theory which warrant further attention. He was immediately attacked by the Daily Beast, 
going so far as to place a tinfoil hat on the journalist. Ben, honey, there's nothing wrong with wearing a tinfoil hat. It's great when you're having a bad hair day. And I have one for every day of the week, different colored too. It's cool. You can set a bold fashion statement. The Inquisitor and many other, oh, let's see. The Inquisitor and many other publications, yada, yada, whatever. CBS 46 initially defended Swan's reporting, but later appeared to take the blame for allowing the report to air. It needed to air. You need to air this shit out. You know, that's why it's called hanging out your dirty laundry, to get the stench out of the building and to clean things up just a bit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Just say, yeah, those are my skid marks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't, maybe you don't want to say that, but hey. Um, shortly after the Pizzagate segment and subsequent attacks, Swan posted the following message across his social media. Hey guys, everyone is asking if everything is okay. They are, and I will be heading back to CBS 46 on Monday, but there will be changes. The biggest one will be that this social media page will be going dark on uh, Tuesday, February the 1st. We've been building this project for six years, and those who have come to know me, I hope you have also come to trust me. So, his disappearance from the internet sparked a massive debate and outcry from his supporters, who wondered whether or not the internet sensation had become a victim of censorship. I was concerned of that, or something worse, I was also concerned about that. Despite shutting down his, web, his own website, Truth and Media, and all of his social media channels, Ben Swan continued to report for CBS 46 in Atlanta. However, his reporting has exclusively focused on local news as opposed to the hard-hitting journalism of his early reality check segments. But, thanks to Dash, the digital currency or digital cash, in mid-December of 2017, Ben Swan began posting in the forums of the cryptocurrency Dash. While an increasing amount of public attention is given to the popular cryptocurrency Bitcoin, many people in the privacy-focused crypto community are placing their support behind Dash. I don't know anything about that stuff. I leave that to Grimmy and trust no one. And I just, I just see it as, nope, that is in your face, cybernetic digits created out of cybernetic nothingness. So to me, that's, that's just an honest form of this piece of paper that we keep passing around. My personal opinion. In any case, there's a lot of people that support it. So hey, booyah. And if you're making uh, the leeches that be nervous, go for it. Whatever it takes, make them bad boys nervous. Originally, this was released under the name Darkcoin back in 2014, and the crypto would later be rebranded as Dash, or Digital Cash. What differentiates Dash from Bitcoin and other altcoins is that Dash is designed to confirm transactions faster than Bitcoin with their Instant Send feature, which can confirm payments in less than a second. I noticed that they said which can. I don't know if it does. But that's, once again, I don't know much about this stuff. Dash also allows for privacy with transactions and balances via private send. The biggest feature that sets Dash apart from Bitcoin is the use of self-governing, self-funding protocol. This allows users to submit proposals to the Treasury which help grow the Dash community and potentially receive funding. Because Dash is a powerful cryptocurrency, and I recommend visiting their website, link above, above on this link, for more thorough technical understanding, which I'll leave that to, sorry, did I mention I did training all day? <laughs> Users submit proposals, 
via forums in the Dash community, and it was these forums where Ben Swan sought assistance for reviving Reality Check and his Truth in Media website. He wrote, We propose that just as Dash is creating disruption in the financial world, it now creates disruption in the media world by bringing back to the masses Reality Check with Ben Swan. As the sole sponsor of Reality Check, Dash will be branded and tied to what is one of the most successful news segments in our world. Our hope is to establish and sustain a long-term partnership, and we would be honored to be an enduring ambassador of Dash. I like the idea, but I like Ben Swan. And, you know, he is very pleasant on the eyes. <laughs> Just saying. So his proposal called on the Dash community to fund the return of 24 two to five minute episodes of Reality Check. I I want longer Reality Checks than that because there seriously there's a lot of people that need a serious Reality Check beside the noggin. The proposal also asked for funding for hiring writers for the Truth and Media website, including. A section on cryptocurrencies like Dash. There you go, Grim. Trust no one. There you go. In late December, the proposal was approved with Ben Swan and team receiving a payout of 800 Dash per month for three months, or about 2.3 million US dollars. Now that was based on at that time. I don't know what prices are right now, so. Could be worth more, could be worth less. According to the proposal, the episodes will air every Tuesday and Thursday beginning February 6th. Booyah! And it doesn't interfere with me. So I can actually listen. Yay! Okay, although Ben Swan's proposal was ultimately approved by the community, he did face opposition because of his reporting on Pizzagate and vaccinations. In response... To the two different questions regarding Pizzagate, Ben had the following to say. First, Pizzagate. I can't say a lot about this at this point, but I will say this. I did not create Pizzagate, nor was I the first journalist to cover it. In fact, I did not cover it until every major network in the country talked about the gunman who entered the pizza place. Those networks also reported that the gunman was responding to a fake conspiracy theory but never explained what the theory was. After receiving hundreds of requests to explain the theory, that is what I did. You may not like the fact that I covered the story at all, but you are yet to explain what I said in that report that was false. Which explained the theory, thank you very much. But I'm not going to say it's a faker. Faker, faker. You may want to call it fake news if you want, but I don't think it is. Now, re uh, regarding his social media blackout, he offered a little thing about the truth about vaccines, which is a free online event, apparently. And it starts tomorrow, if that's right. If I'm reading this right, um, can't discuss it yet. Everything that has happened um, to cause RC to be continued, I'm still working uh, with CBS in Atlanta, and I can tell you that since the beginning of 2017, I've had dozens of huge websites and video content companies contact me about providing RC through their channels. I have absolutely no doubt that the continued viral reach will not be a problem. I still receive several dozen emails every week asking when RC will come back, which RC is reality check for those of you like me that are somewhat um, alphabetic soup challenged from time to time. <laughs> Just from time to time. Ben also confirmed that he will be beginning or he will begin appearing publicly starting with the Anarcopolco conference in Acapulco, Mexico in late February. 
He's already been invited by Jeff Berwick to speak in Acapulco, and the slot I have I've been offered is to be just before the keynote speaker, Dr. Ron Paul. How awesome! Ben Swan's reporting style, honesty, and cred uh, credibility has been sorely missed from the independent media for the last year, and many of us, and I agree here, myself included, have done our best to fill the gap left by Swan. Okay, I really haven't done my best to fill the gap, because, yeah, how do you fill the gap that Ben left? I don't, wow. It will be a great pleasure to have him back in the trenches, working alongside the truth media, not the corporate lame-ass propaganda system. That will be awesome. Oh, thank you, Kate. <laughs> Grimmy, you can read. Let's see. Let's see. 50 cents has been sitting on the Bitcoin. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Dash. Da, 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 da. So I'm looking here. Grimmy, you can write and you can read because you chat. Okay, you chat. <laughs> oh, well. I am tickled that he's coming back, and it's not just because of the eye candy. I really do like, I, I get a lot of information from him. But I also, I did kind of sort of fill the gap with Dr. John Bergman, which I shared a video in the RLM chat just a little bit, ago, well, before I went live of Dr. John, and I absolutely love Dr. John Bergman, and I love his laugh. He is just, he's just such a happy guy. And he tells you nutritional things that you can do instead of taking drugs. You know, and I'm not talking like marijuana or shit like that, because to me, that's not drugs. I'm talking the shit that Big Pharma is dispensing. You know, the legal drug dealers, the ones with the white lab coats. Those guys. So... Okay, getting this one shared around a little bit. Hi, pissed off Patri Oh, you're planning your brother's wedding. Aye, aye. <laughs> that would suck, darling. I, mm, I've been involved in the planning of one wedding and in the preparation and craziness of another one. And that, mm, that was enough for me. Yeah. And in case you're wondering, mine really didn't have much planning. <laughs> it was like, wow, I got a really swelled belly. <laughs> Let's go see the judge. <laughs> I, am I telling stories? Yes, I am. Well, yeah. That first one can come any time. Just saying. <laughs> oh, I was a naughty girl. Uh, what the hey? He poked fun. I took him serious. So, now, this is one that I think Grimmy shared. Grimmy, did you do this one? The salon? Was that you? So many dummies in the world. Yes, there are an awful lot of... Um, yep. There's a lot of... What was it? Frank Zappa had... Uh, what was that quote? He said, scientists say that hydrogen is the most uh, plentiful, most plentiful element in the universe. And he disagreed. He believes that stupidity is the most plentiful element in the universe. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Okay, let me see. Who was it that shared this about Dipstick McGick. Where's he at? Dun, 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 dun. It was Grim, Rick Perry. So, from Salon.com, Rick Perry. Hey, Rick, honey, just, just go in a corner, okay? It would be so much better. <sighs> Apparently, Rick Perry said that by exporting fossil fuels, the U.S. is exporting freedom. No, what we're doing, honey, is we are controlling the price with that. Because we do produce an awful lot of oil in this country. 
and we would not really have to import all that much, especially not from OPEC. But when you say that you have to have imports from OPEC, stop and look at the security that you have to have set up in order to keep that quote unquote pipeline flowing from OPEC. So, you know, yes, we produce an awful lot of fuel over here. And you know what? We sell it to like Europe and a few other places that don't produce their own. And uh, so they're making profits on that end. And then when they purchase from OPEC, they don't let them fool you. They're making profits on that end as well. And it props up the military industrial complex. So, hey, it's kind of a trifecta winner, winner, chicken dinner kind of thing for them. Yay. Oh, well. In an interview on Fox Business's Mornings with Maria. Hello, Maria. From the World Economic Forums of Davos, Energy Secretary Rick Perry touted the idea that Trumpel's administration, um, their energy agenda is spreading freedom around the world. Honey. Honey, it might be similar in color, but I think the aroma is a little bit more pungent, what we're spreading around the world. The United States is not just exporting energy, we're exporting freedom, and, and that way they won't hate us for our freedoms. Yeah, as if no other country has freedoms, like Australia doesn't have any, and UK doesn't have any, and Denmark doesn't, and Canada, and, 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 and. You could go on for quite a while with that one. Hmm, he apparently said this in an interview referring to the exports of fossil fuels like oil and coal, and yet they say it's such a limited supply and the prices have to go up because we just don't have enough. And <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. We're exporting to our allies in Europe the opportunity to truly have a choice of where do you buy your energy from? That's freedom. And that kind of freedom is priceless. Yeah, which is why the prices just keep going up because you keep saying, <laughs> really? Name a price. We're going to up it 10% minimum. Mm. So if exporting energy means exporting freedom to Perry, one wonders why oil-rich authoritarian states like Saudi Arabia and Qatar aren't bastions of freedom. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder, I better not wander too far, I might get lost. Perry went on to say um, our, uh, to our allies that America's energy exports come with a no-strings-attached relationship. Oh, <laughs> liar, liar. Every pair of pants in your closet's on fire. You better go home and put that out, Rick. <laughs> yeah. The United States isn't about controlling a country with its energy. No, we have more devious ways of doing it. Although we use that one, too. It's about literally freeing up our allies around the world, letting them know that we're going to be there for them. There's no strings attached. No, there's chains. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not when you buy American liquid natural gas. So that's world changing. Oh, so that's the one that there's no strings attached to. It's just got chains and everything else has got all kind of implied. Mm. So in what seemed like a barb aimed at OPEC, Perry also invited worldwide competition but requested fair subsidies. Why do you have to subsidize? Why do you have to subsidize the oil industry? Why do you have to subsidize the agricultural industry? Why do you subsidize the uh, tobacco industry? Why do you subsidize Big Pharma? Why are you subsidizing anyone? Or the auto industry, or the banking industry, or any of those big industries. Why is the government subsidizing those? Is a subsidies, is that what you guys, that's your fancy word for you big corporate guys whose pockets you're in? Is that the fancy word for welfare 
for them. We're giving them subsidies. The rest of you, it's entitlements. Yeah, and you ain't entitled. Really? <laughs> yeah, I love the words they use. They play such wonderful word games, and it, I'm not talking Scrabble. So, you want to compete against the United States, huh? Well, bring it. But don't subsidize in a way that's unfair. Oh, you can't do what we're doing because we said that's not fair. If you do what we're doing because we got to have an edge because we said so because we're free. Or something like that. And that's not very fail. See, I'm not surprised that we have so many children wandering around these days going, but that's not very fail. Now I'm off-ended. I need to go to my safe room. I don't have a safe room. But I do have a, a blankie fort. <laughs> Even if it's just in my mind. Hmm. So, don't get into the market and try to gobble all the market. And then, all of a sudden, after you've choked everybody else out of the market, guess what? Prices go up. Yeah! I, I think that's how they got to the point where they're at right now, hon. Yeah. It was called that... Um, artificial gas shortage way back in the 70s yeah uh, i see how you yeah you guys are trying to play that trump card again huh oh no pun intended or maybe it was i don't know apparently in june of 2017 the trumples administration publicly announced its push to make merca energy dominant which is part of what perry lauded on mornings with maria well, if you want to make us energy dominant, why don't you keep all of that energy here and we just stop importing because that really does mess with the GDP balance. I learned about spreadsheets and balance sheets and that kind of shit today. So I kind of figured some, of course I knew about some of this anyway, but no, stop exporting and then you, would, you wouldn't need to import. Oh, but then you couldn't tack on those extra fees, could ya? Oh, sucks. Apparently, Bodus Trump will still skin wants Merca to achieve energy dominance by utilizing our abundant resources for good, both here and abroad. <laughs> You're right. Perry said in a June press briefing, um, an energy-dominant America means self-reliant. It means secure nation, free from the geopolitical turmoil of other nations who seek to use energy as an economic weapon. Well, you know, I really can't argue with that statement, you know, just the way it reads, but we know that that's not what they mean. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, America's fossil fuel production will reach a record high level in 2018 and is on track to set a record in 2019, which means that we don't need to export anymore. Let the rest of the world deal with their... Oh, that's right. That's being an isolationist. Oh, darn. No, see, I call that cleaning up our own backyard first. That's what I call it. Taking care of your own, cleaning up your own backyard, and then leading by example. Not getting out there with guns and shit and saying, we're going to bring you freedom whether you like it or not. Look, here comes some planes. They're going to drop a shitload of freedom on you. Some of you may not survive, but, well, that's called collateral damage. Earlier this week, Trump will still skin announced that the administration plans on issuing tariffs on solar panels. Really? A move that could set back the renewable energy industry and exemplifies the administration's head-in-the-sand stance on climate change. Rah, 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 feelings about fossil fuels. Oh, climate changes, honey. It just does. And using solar panels is absolutely awesome. And, you know, let's get the prices down just to go to where the average Joe could afford them. But you have to supplement. You can't just do solar panels. Sorry.
Not right now, not with the current technology. You can supplement with wind, you can supplement with geothermal, electromagnetism, all kind of cool shit is out there. Hell, some of those might even make solar panels just be eh, because you won't need solar panels. There's all kinds of technology out there that they don't want us to have access to because it cuts into national security, a.k.a. fossil fuels, a.k.a. national security, because of petrodollar. And the wheels on the bus go round and round. But wait, there's more. According to NASA research, oh yeah, like we're going to believe this shit. Burning fossil fuels is a major contributor to the increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide, which is a primary cause of climate change. Wait, pay no attention to those or ice core samples that say that long time ago in the ice core, there is evidence that shows that the CO2 levels were way higher. And they're really, yeah, there was no um, fossil fuel usage going on at that time either. So stop spraying the skies, assholes. That's a lot of it right there. Hmm. <clears throat> Apparently most alarming about Perry's disconcerting pro-fossil fuel rhetoric, 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 rhetoric. That's almost like red rum, isn't it? Hmm, squirrel is that once again brings the conventional wisdom on a major world initiative, the Paris, Paris Climate Agreement, which was created to develop a global solution to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, here's, here's a question, you know, since you're talking about a global solution here. I want to know if the world turns as the stomach turns or as the world turns. If the world is turning and China has got all of this pollution over China, why does it stay over China? Or does does the atmosphere actually just kind of stay tacked down to a certain location? And if that does happen, then, then how come when um, a volcano erupts, that ash gets spread throughout the atmosphere, but then China with all of their pollution and all this other fun stuff, you know, from there trying to get into the big new 21st century kind of world. How come their pollution stays? I, w I want that explained to me because I keep hearing China is so polluted and no, it just stays in China. You, They don't have winds coming off of the Himalayans and stuff. I know I'm showing off my geographic little bit of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, greenhouse gas emissions. I'll give you greenhouse gas emissions. Come on over and have some chili. <laughs> Apparently, in other words, to stop humanity's march toward ruining the planet through a climate apocalypse, like his superiors, Perry is intent on marching faster towards doomsday. Hmm, you know, <clears throat> I will agree that uh, what's going on right now is man-made. It's just not the majority of humans that are doing it. It's y'all. It's y'all doing it. Oh, and there's what's his fuck. Who's that? The Bill Nye, the science guy. You do realize that he started out as a, com you know, he worked at Boeing, I believe, and was trying to break in as a stand-up comedian. Yeah, and that's the science guy. Don't you feel special? I don't. Mm. Let's see. Reason to write. Yeah, there we go. There's Vinny. Oh, I see that, Rob Works. I saw that earlier today. NSA deletes honesty and openness from their core values. You know why? Because they just plain couldn't lie in our faces anymore because too many people were calling them out on their honesty <laughs> and openness and lack thereof. I... Where... <sighs> How do these people keep getting in these 
positions. And, and I like that. I saw something the other day over here on Mines. Um, let me go see if I can find it. Because I, I, I shared it or forwarded it or whatever it is. Please stop calling the members of the House and Senate, along with our Popopotus, our leaders. They are our employees, not our rulers. Now, this is from Jim Hayden for POTUS 2016. Thank you, Jim Hayden. I don't recall you running for POTUS, but I don't know if you got any votes or not, honey. Not that it would make any difference. But, yeah. You know, if you go along with the story that they've been trying to feed us all along, that, you know, the Constitution and all this other fun shit, they're supposed to be our employees, according to the story that they're feeding us. Why in the hell isn't it that way? Because we like our lovely little bedtime stories. And we want to hear more, because it's so much nicer than what they're really doing. Hmm... I needed another sip. I think I'll put Rick over here on this effing side as well. Hmm. Rick is just not exactly the sharpest crayon in the box to start with. And wow. Really? And my mother asked me the other day, some some guy that was a representative here in the great state of Kansas ass, um, is, um, he was he was the first appointee by Trumple Stilskin, I guess, and for the director of the CIA. And mom was asking me about it, and it's like, oh, mom, we're so screwed. <laughs> I just, wow. Somebody from, which she was wanting to know, why is he picking someone from Kansas for the director of the CIA? And I'm thinking, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, mother. I've never talked to Trumpel, and I really don't care to. Not exactly one of those things on my bucket list. Unless it's bucket of shit list. Which I'm probably on somebody's bucket of shit list. But hey. Okay. Let me see. What else is going on? Welcome to Anarchy. Anarchy 101. There you go. James Comey to teach ethical leadership. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's just funny that is funny thank you rob works that's hilarious james comey teaching ethical leadership yeah <laughs> oh that's true i gotta go to that one now um hi What's that, Frumpy? I saw that. I saw that little meme thingy that you shared, Frumpy. Um, okay, let me see. Where's this at? I got to open that link because I got to check that shit out. <laughs> These people. Wow. They never get over themselves, do they? From uh, newsbusters.org. Thank you, Rob. James Comey to teach ethical leadership course at Alma, Mar Alma Mater. Press notes, no irony. <laughs> yeah. uh, what happens if he, has, if he goes to jail first? Does he get a teacher from there? Wow, this will be definitely... I'm going to teach you a course in ethical leadership by showing you exactly what it's not. Yeah. Apparently on Friday, the College of William and Mary announced that former FIBR director James Comey, a 1982 graduate, will teach a three-credit course on ethical leadership beginning this fall. <laughs> Huh. Establishment press coverage of Comey's assignment coinciding with being named an executive professor in educraption yay, has mostly avoided the myriad reasons why having him teach such a course 
is a horrible lapse in judgment by W&M. Of course, you know, maybe what they're looking for is to have someone come in and teach them just exactly how not to behave. Because a lot of times, those negative lessons are the ones that really stick. You know, it's like when you say, hold my beer, watch this, and it turns out badly. Usually, those are the ones you remember. Usually because someone got it on video and they don't let you forget, especially if you have head trauma. But, <laughs> hold my beer, watch this. This is, <laughs> this is the ivory towers of edgycraption version of that one. Huh, is that hold my champagnia and watch this kind of thing? Or my brie? Oh, well. So how is Comey qualified to be involved in teaching such a course is a mystery? Unless he plans on, oh, see, unless he plans on using his career as an example of everything not to do. See, see, I, I tapped into it before and I just, wow, I went fine with my headphones. Hmm. Kobe's been credibly accused of committing at least the following crimes and ethical lapses, which should disqualify him from his announced assignment. So, what has he been uh, credibly accused of? In May of 2016, America learned that Comey contended in a or yeah contended in a March memo, as paraphrased at Fox News, that. POTUS Trumpel-Stilskin attempted to obstruct the Michael Flynn investigation. Republican Congressman Louis Gorm, uh, Gomert, Gomert? What the hell? Uh, citing federal law, noted that if Comey really believed that, he was duly bound by law to report it immediately. Thus, Comey appeared to be confessing to a crime. Comey lied under oath when he told a congressional committee that decided not to recommend criminal charges relating to former Secretary of State Shitlery Clinton and her mishandling of classified information after she was interviewed by the Fibbers on July 2nd of 2016. He has admitted better word bragging, that as explained by law professor Jonathan Turley, that he intentionally used a friend to leak his memos to the media. Turley believes these actions may be federal crimes at a minimum. He characterized them as deeply troubling from a professional and ethical standpoint. In other words, honey, if you expect professional and ethical behavior, it's got to come from someone who's got some ethics to them and knows how to behave professionally. Obviously, the only kind of professionally he knows how to behave for is... Um, to be a mouthpiece and perform well under a desk for shitlery. Oh, and that thought in and of itself just gave me shivers. Whew. Apparently reports at the Associated Press, The Hill, Reuters, and Washington Post, and Time.com all act as if these and other matters either don't exist or that they shouldn't cause anyone to question the propriety of Comey's teaching and ethics and leadership course. I'm going to lead you down the path of how to behave unethically. It's the opposite day. Apparently, these press reports, when they have noted controversies during Comey's fibber tenure, have either mentioned that Popo Trumpel-Stilskin fired him, apparently making tr uh, Comey a perceived hero by default. Well, you know, when you do things that make it to where you deserve being fired don't be surprised if it happened besides the fact that honey did you not see that reality show that Trumples did for a few years there he got really good at saying you're fired he liked it got paid well to do it too hmm oh and attacking him from the left as seen in the sentence um, at the uh, Richard Times dispatch his controversial role in the email scandal surrounding presidential nominee Hillary Clinton is seen by experts as one reason the Democrats lost the 2016 election. 
Uh, no, they lost because shitlery is actually not really, that's not the real shitlery. I still believe she, she's, the real one is gone. This is, this is one of the body doubles. With a quick little, you know, plastic surgery thing, which why would you want to look even more like that? But, eh. Apparently the press rarely misses an opportunity to play the sore loser card over Clinton. A Tuesday Wall Street Journal editorial had a tongue-in-cheek advice on questions to discuss and speakers to invite during Comey's curse. Cur course. Purr. God, it would help if I could read. It is a curse. Among them, when a public official can choose to ignore rules and standards for con of conduct for what he considers to be a higher purpose with special appearances by Uma Abedin and Anthony Weiner serving as the ethical guides wow no no thank you newsbusters i used to watch newsbusters videos quite a bit i just i've strayed away darn it all hmm let's see Demand the media invent no I'm I'm not gonna sign no damn petition to demand that Shitlery get investigated. It's not gonna do a darn bit of good. What are you gonna do? It's just like um what was that article? It's in my pocket. Uh just a sec. I gotta share this over here on uh this effing site because it's too effing funny. That's what it is. Really? Brain suckers are us. Hey, idiots. In any case, um, and I don't remember who it was that shared it this morning. I mm. okay. Dun dun dun. There it is. Latest dead body tied to the Clintons turns up valuable evidence. Now, I am going to kind of sort of try and keep track of this one. This is on uh, direct from USANews.com. Another body found in a shallow grave in Arkansas has been tied to the Clintons. Marcia Ann Bosley, who was the head housekeeper at the governor's mansion before she was mysteriously let go in 1985, has been positively identified after spending more than three decades in the ground. Bosley, who had no family when she was let go, was assumed to have left the area for other opportunities. When she was n and she was never reported missing, according to the Hamilton County Coroner. Huh. Why report someone missing when you know exactly where they're at? The body was wrapped so well in plastic that much of the tissue is still intact, and we're able, we were able to extract two DNA samples. We've determined that one was an unborn child. Hmm, the plot thickens. That could be huge in determining who else was a part of this young woman's life. I'm betting Slick Willie, <laughs> good old Slick Willie, who just couldn't keep dicking his, dicking, <laughs> dipping his wick in someone else's wax, and well, cause seriously, would you want to dip yours in Hillary's? I don't think so. In any case, there has been no official ties made to the Clinton crime syndicate, but the Arkansas Attorney General has said that nobody is above the law in his state. They go. Get after it, hun. This I gotta see. And we all know that hasn't been the case in the past. Maybe with some solid physical evidence to fall back on, things could be different. The Clintons aren't answering requests for comments. Well, because <laughs> this kind of took them, you know, sideways. They're already trying to cover up that shit pile that they got going on with their foundation. Hmm. Things are falling apart there, hon. 
Apparently, they have several spokespeople around the country that are ha 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 and calling any connection to this story absurd, I tell you. Those crazy conspiracy nuts. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But another body found in a shallow grave in Arkansas that, oops, and there it repeats itself again. Sorry, I caught, I got a bit, a bit. I started reading it again. In any case, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, and there's a latest that just showed up up there from January 25th. So is this, where is this one from? Chuck Schumer's daughter breaks her silence. Ooh, I'm reading the headlines going across a little top ticker. Hmm, okay. Let's put this one over here. I probably ought to refresh my effin. My effin? Effin. I don't know if any of you guys saw this earlier today. Um, what's that? Okay. Girl 7 groomed online by robot in shock case police can do nothing about. What is that? Oh, by a, uh, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Thank you, no. I'll put this one over on mine, so. I don't remember if I put it over here or not earlier today. <laughs> okay. Back to my pocket I go, because I know I have more stuff in there. I know I do. Um, I have this one that um, the Amazon shop, I kind of sort of read that, and it really didn't, nah. But I will go to this one. $21 trillion in unauthorized spending by U.S. government discovered by economics professor. Now, I have seen something about this, oh, a couple months back, but it wasn't quite that amount. This is from RT.com. Why does this not surprise me one darn bit? It's from January the 17th, or edited January the 17th of this year. The U.S. government may have, may have, possibly, almost, kind of, sort of, might have misspent $21 trillion. Oh, they didn't really spend it. There was just a few people that had sticky fingers and really big pockets. This is according to a professor at Michigan State University. Papers supporting the study briefly went missing just as an audit was announced. Huh. Apparently, two departments in the U.S. federal government may have spent as much as $21 trillion on things they can't account for or can't account for. That's between 1998 and 2015. Or at least that's what Mark Skidmore, a professor of economics at MSU specializing in public finance, and his team have found. He came up with the figure after digging the websites of Department of Defense and Housing and Urban Development. Now, this is just two departments, which is why I keep saying if I ran the zoo, I would get rid of all of them. Every damn one of them. Just tell them, sorry, you're fired. Pink slip. Go home. Your services are no longer required. Um, oh, and this is as well as um, the Office of the Inspector General over the summer. Hmm. The research was triggered by Skidmore hearing Catherine Austin Fitz, a former... Assistant Secretary in HUD in the first Bush administration saying that the Inspector General found $6.5 trillion worth of military spending that the DOD couldn't account for. Huh. She was referring to a July 2016 report 
by the uh, office of the inspector general, but Skidmore thought she must be mistaken billions for trillions. And based on his previous experience with public finances, he thought the figure was too big even for an organization as large as the U.S. military. You know, sometimes you have an adjustment that just because you don't have adequate transactions, so an auditor would just recede. Usually, it's just a small portion of authorizing spending, maybe 1% at most. So for the Army, 1% would be 1.2 billion of transactions that you just can't account for. Wow, that's what he explained earlier this month in an interview with uswatchdog.com. But still, 1.2 billion, I could live and my children and my grandchildren and their grandchildren could all probably live quite comfortably on that. Well, maybe not their grandchildren, but my children and my grandchildren could. Hmm. After discovering that the figure was accurate, he and Fitz collaborated with a pair of graduate students to comb through thousands of reports of the OIG dating back to 1998, when new rules of public accountability for the federal government were set, and all the way to 2015, the time of the latest reports available at the time. The research was only for the DOD and the HUD. This is incomplete, but we have found 21 trillion with a T in adjustments over that period. You know, if you were to try to count, starting at the moment of Christ's birth, and you said, you know, started counting at one every second, I don't think you would be able to, up to now, I don't know, would you be able to get to 21 trillion? Even if it was every minute, I don't, that's an awful lot of, that's a lot of zeros. That's a lot. That's an unreal number is what that is. Apparently, the biggest chunk is for the Army. Yay, Army. They were able to find 13 of the 17 years, and we found about $11.5 trillion just for the Army. Well, you know, it's like this. We kept blowing shit up. And then, well, you know, they were going to cut our budget, so we had to get rid of stuff so that we wouldn't lose our budgetary funding. So we just buried it out in the desert. And seriously, that's what happens. Check into it. It really does. I, I, being on city council for four years, I know how some of this shit works. Don't really understand all of it, but I know how some of this crap works. And especially the little juggling from one line item to another. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the professor would not suggest whether the missing trillions went to something legitimate or some legitimate undisclosed projects or wasted or misappropriated, which we all have read articles about wastefulness and misappropriations. You know, it's like when they have a, a contract with a uh, supplier for Oh, let's say light bulbs. And in that contract, you are required to, whenever you place an order with them, it must be a certain monetary amount. And so, yeah, you you only need one toilet seat because, well, maintenance staff is too freaking lazy to go down and look in the goddamn warehouse that's full of pallets of toilet seats because, you know, you have to order a certain amount. And so they order one toilet seat, and that one toilet seat wound, winds up costing, figuring it out, 250 bucks for a toilet seat or a light bulb that costs 150 bucks. Why? Because they have contracts. And if you have a government contract, that's as good as gold. Because it's the government's money. No, it's not. It's not real. Ugh. Yeah, wasted. Misappropriated is probably a better way. 
but he believes his uh, find indicates that there is something profoundly wrong with the budgeting process in the U.S. federal government. Some of that probably has to do with the fact that they haven't actually passed a budget in how long? And when Slick Willie said that they didn't go over budget one year, honey, no, nah. you still had a deficit. Don't give me that chit. I know how you played the magic numbers roulette thing. So, such lack of transparency goes against the due process of authorizing federal spending through the U.S. Congress, he said, which Congress, eh, bunch of lackeys that are just sitting on their asses somewhere, not necessarily in Congress, but they're sitting on their asses and they're drawing a hell of a paycheck. They need to be fired too. Ooh, rant. Skidmore <clears throat> also co-authored a column on Forbes uh, explaining his research. And the same week the interview took place, uh, the DOD announced that it will conduct its first ever audit. Its first ever. First ever. Stop and think about that. First ever. It is important that the Congress and the American people have confidence in the DOD's management of every taxpayer dollar. <laughs> Too late. That's from Comptroller David Norquist. That's what he told reporters as he explained that the OIG has hired independent auditors to dig through the military finances, which I've also... Um, seen a few interviews where they say, yeah, they know about the corruption. They have found it countless times. They have tried to bring it before Congress and nobody wants to listen. You know why? Because their fingers are in the till. That's why. So while we can't know for sure what role our efforts to compile original government documents and share them with the public as played, we believe it may have made a difference, said Skidmore. Interestingly, in early December, the authors of the research discovered that the links to key document that they used, including the 2016 report, have been disabled. Huh. Days later, the documents were reposted under different addresses. Huh. Curiouser and curiouser. Well, yeah. Hey, lovely Kate, how you doing, hon? See you again. Let's see. Uh, da -da. I better put this over on the effing side as well. After I get a sip of coffee. Because I've been talking a lot. JJ says I talk a lot. And yes, I do, JJ's. Yes, I do. But I got two hours to fill here, hon. And I can't just giggle all the way through it. People will get bored with that. <laughs> oh, I love JJ's. I love listening to JJ's. I am so sad that my sound card at work doesn't work. Sunny beaches. I know. I know. I'll take my tablet to work and I'll listen that. Plug in my earbuds. It'll all be cool. I can listen to them then. Okay. Let's see. Which one? Yeah, there we go. We'll do that. P -p -p Poop. Okay, and I better put it on mines, too. Let's see. Oh, shit. It would help if I could spell. So, back to my pocket I go. Hey, and I just said your tax dollars in someone's pocket, and this is not that pocket. I'm not finding. Nope, there ain't none of that shit in my pockets. 
Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's getting late enough. I probably ought to go check out the pig. See what happened this date in history. Oh, you know what? And I keep seeing all of this stuff that they're going to they're gonna make Trumples uh, speak under oath and all of this other fun shit. You know, there is something about while in the... Um, Oh, I don't remember the actual wording now, but really, you you can't touch Trumples. Sorry. This is all a play anyway. Wait till the next act comes up. It's going to get real interesting from what I understand. I got my lawn chair and my popcorn, and I had someone tell me that that, that was an apathetic way to be. No, it's not, because really, seriously, I might have some rotten tomatoes to throw at them, too, so I'm going to get involved. It's just that I want to sit there and watch this shit as it unfolds, so I know who gets the rottenest tomato. <laughs> oh. Yay. I'm checking out... Um, Tweeted Times, the Real Liberty Media one, right now. For those of you that are curious, North Korea sends rare announcement to all Koreans. Calls for unification. <sighs> I, I, I think all of this is just shiny baubles. You know, they just keep dangling stuff in front of us to get us to go... Ugh. And I, I, more and more, I just want to laugh at most of it. And the rest of it, I just want to laugh because it, uh, I look better laughing than I do sobbing my mind out. Which is, yeah. So, I'm over here on the pig right now. And the uh, word of the day, according to Hambo and Porcus, is predator. It's a nifty remote-controlled weapon of Darwinian retribution, which allows Uncle Sam to deselect richly deserving jihadikazi assets when they emerge from under their rocks. Mmm, predator drone. Hmm. You know, I could think of some other people that, you know, the ones that like push on that predator drone button, I could think of some of them that probably need to be on the receiving end of their own BS. Okay, in the quotable quotes section. Frankly, I don't know what it is about California, but it seems to have a strange urge to elect really obnoxious women to high office. I'm not bragging, you understand, but no other state, including Maine, even comes close when it comes to sending left-wing dingbats to Washington. We're number one. There's no getting around the fact that last time anyone saw the likes of Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, or Nancy Pelosi, they were stirring a cauldron when the curtain went up on Macbeth. The three of them are like jackasses who happen to possess the gift of speech. You don't know if you should condemn them for their stupidity or simply marvel at their ability to form words. That's from columnist Bert... Prelutsky. Well, Bert Prelutsky, I really like that quotable quote. I really do. That, that, yeah. You know, there's times when I, and the saddest part of all is I look at those three, preferably I try not to, but occasionally it's like they go right there and I'm like, oh, oh, who, you know, it's not bad enough that they are who they are, the shining examples of whatever it is they're an example of. But then when you stop and think that people actually went to the voting booth and voted for them. So apparently, this is why aliens don't come down here and say, take me to your leader anymore. Because they've seen. They have seen. They've got cable, and they have seen what uh, passes for leadership around here. And they're like, no, take me to your yokel. Because, <laughs> you know, which is probably why there's not a lot of rednecks that go, 
Hey, I seen it coming up over the hill. Okay. Let's see. This is in their tasty tidbits. Let me check this out. So, what love means to eight, four to eight-year-old kids. Apparently, a group of professional people posed this question to a group of four to eight-year-olds. What does love mean? And the answers they got were broader, deeper, and more profound than anyone could have ever imagined. Answer number one. When my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all of the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love, which yes, Rebecca, age eight, that is. That I would qualify as loving someone. When someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. That is from Billy, age four. Wow, that's really pretty profound, too. Love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and smell each other. <laughs> that's from Carl, age five. You go, Carl. You got, you got it pegged now, dude. Don't ever forget that lesson. <laughs> Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. Ah, oh, Chrissy, you know that, that too. Yeah. Love is what makes you smile when you're tired. This is according to Terry, age four. Yes, Terry, I gotta agree with that one too. Love is when my mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip or give, before giving it to him. To make sure it tastes okay. Yes, Danny, age eight, yes. Yeah, that that's pretty good. Although, you, Flash would probably look at Cirque and go, don't backwash. But hey. <laughs> Apparently, love is what is in the room with you at Christmas. If you stop opening presents and just listen. Oh, wow, Bobby. That's from a seven-year-old. Oh, I got a lot more faith in that younger generation than I do in some of them that are passing for young adults right now. Wow. Don't let these children change. Don't let society change these children. If you want to learn to love better, you should start with the friend who you hate. Oh. Wow, Nikki. That's Nikki, age six. Wow. I, I tell you what, words of wisdom. Love is when you tell a guy that you like his shirt. Then he wears it every day. Well, yes, Noel, yeah. <laughs> Love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends even after they know each other so well. Yes, Tommy, age six, yes. During a piano recital, I was on a stage and I was scared. I looked at all of the people watching me and saw my daddy waving and smiling. He was the only one doing that. I wasn't scared anymore. There you go, Cindy, age eight. See? See, these kids are a lot more perceptive than we give them credit for. My mommy loves me more than anybody. You don't see anyone else kissing me to sleep at night. Thank you, Claire, age six. That is, there you go. Love is when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. <laughs> yes, Elaine, sometimes, yeah, sometimes that is. Love is when mommy sees daddy smelly and sweaty and still says he is handsomer than Robert Redford. Bless your heart, Chris, age seven. Bless your heart, yeah. Love is when your puppy licks your face even after you've left him alone all day. Yep, Marianne. Puppies, she's four, by the way. That wisdom out of a four-year-old. I know my older sister loves me because she gives me all of her old clothes and has to go out and buy new ones. Oh, Lauren, another four-year-old. See, it's just a different way of looking at things. How awesome. When you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. That's from Karen, age seven. Wow. 
Love is when mommy sees daddy on the toilet and she doesn't think it's gross. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, age six. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Mark. You know that. Wow. <laughs> I can't argue with that one, Mark. <laughs> You really shouldn't say, I love you, unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot, because people forget. That's from Jessica, age 8. And the winner was a 4-year-old child whose next-door neighbor was an elderly gentleman who had recently lost his wife. Upon seeing the man cry, the little boy went into the old gentleman's yard, climbed onto his lap, and just sat there. When his mother asked, um what he had said to the neighbor the little boy said nothing i just helped him cry wow <sighs> wow i could see my my youngest grandchild doing that i really could okay this date in history the 24th of january 638 Islamikazis start their own calendar, but never resolve that pesky turn-of-the-century issue, trapping them in the 7th century permanently. Mm, wow. And the only other one they got, the 24th of January, 1988, experimental plan plane Voyager completes first non-stop round-the-world flight without refueling. Pilot breaks land speed record in his dash for the nearest bathroom. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that would definitely, no, you would need to have one of those little things with the, ooh. <laughs> oh, there's lots more over here on the, um, on the free state of pig, pigazette.com. What is this? Oh, my God. From the bottom of our piggish hearts, Pig says, Bite me to the class warriors who promote failure as the vir uh, ultimate virtue by demonizing achievers whose success was earned the old-fashioned way as public enemy number one. But from the bottom of our piggish hearts, Pig says, Bite me to the entire Kardashian clan whose media-whoring, gold-digging antics are disgusting. Their allotted 15 minutes of infamy can't end too soon. Thank you ever so much. I gotta agree with that one. Mm, oh, there's all kinds of piggish bite me's going on over here. So y'all need to come check them out along with, yeah, you can check and see what Hambo's got to say in Hambo's Hammer. Check out the Prattler. It's a um, pretty interesting read as well. And then there's the Gospel According to Porcus Pitchfork. So, hey. All kind of, and fun links all along the side. Um, oh, apparently in the pig calendar, January is pronoun pride month. Just say no to gender bender gibberish. Oh, I try to convince people that identify as a millionaire and they just keep putting their hand out. I, I don't get it. Hmm. Oh, really, Graham? Cool. Okay, I gotta check this out. Grimmy just shared something um, over here in the RLM. Oops. Oh, there we go. Oops. Hmm. Okay. This is from fastcompany.com. Thank you, Grimmy. A 14-year-old made an app to help Alzheimer's patients recognize their loved ones. And then someone else needs to help them get more of the proper cholesterol in their diet so that they at least won't get worse and possibly get better. Eat boiled eggs, eat fried eggs, eat eggs, eat eggs, eat eggs. Lots and lots of that cholesterol. Your brain needs it. 
Apparently, after watching her grandmother struggle to remember her own family members, the young coder, Emma Yang, decided to figure out how to use AI and facial recognition to help her and others coping with the illness. When Emma Yang was seven or eight years old, her grandmother became increasingly forgetful. Over the next few years, those memory problems caused by an early Alzheimer's disease worsened. Yang, who learned to code at an early age, decided to create an app to help. I have personal experience with how the disease can affect not only the patient but also family and friends. And when I was about 11 or 12, I got really interested in using technology for social good to help other people around the world, says Yang, who is now 14. See? See, there is hope. We got amazing young people like this. And those wonderful ones with those awesome answers over on Pig. In her app under development called Timeless, Alzheimer patients can scroll through photos of friends and family and the app will tell them who the person is and how they're related to the patient using facial recognition tech. If the patient doesn't recognize someone in the same room, they can take a picture and the tech will also try to automatically identify them. Cool! I saw a lot of things about how AI and facial recognition were really evolving and being applied in more and more areas, especially healthcare, she says. And she partnered with mentors at a tech company which makes the facial recognition software that is now used by the app and learned to code for the iPhone for the first time. The app also includes a simple reminder screen that lists appointments for the day along with a simple contact screen that shows photos of family members along with names. If a patient tries to call a contact repeatedly, something that can sometimes happen because of the disease, the app will flash a quick reminder. Are you sure you want to call? You just called less than five minutes ago. A me page shows the patient's own name, age, phone number, and address. A caregiver maintains some of the other parts of the app, including putting events on the daily calendar and inviting friends and family to send an initial set of photos that the facial recognition algorithm can use to learn to identify them. The app is still in development and Yang doesn't yet have proof that it will work. In a crowdfunding campaign, she's raising money to take it to the next step of piloting with parents, or with patients, excuse me. But she is optimistic that it can help, especially if introduced to someone in the early stages of the disease, which if you catch them in the early stages of the disease, then please help them with their diet. Oh God, and there's a freaking featured video of someone getting chipped on the side. Damn it, that hurts my eyes. There are no apps on the market that really help Alzheimer's patients with their daily lives, she says. And a lot of times, people think that it's not going to help, or the elderly can't really use technology. But in fact, if you strategically introduce it to them, it's actually a possibility and can really benefit their lives. Catherine Posen, an associate professor at UC or UCSF Memory and Aging Center, who was not involved with the project, agrees. Can be hard for somebody who has a lot of cognitive impairment or memory problems to learn a new technology or software. But if somebody's mild in their disease and with support from their caregiver, it's possible that if the app is simple enough that they can learn to use it through re repetition and practice. Scrolling through the labeled photos, Posen says, can be a type of social activity for the patient, keeping or helping keep family members and friends in mind. It also could strengthen memory. I think it can be very helpful for patients to rehearse memories that are important to them. 
having a chance to rehearse that can strengthen those memories and make them stronger, which strengthen them, duh, and make them more resilient in the face of the disease. That is just awesome. Awesome sauce, Graham. Thank you ever so much for sharing that in the chat. Um, no, I don't think we need to be spreading our seeds anywhere besides where we're at right now because I think we have spread our seeds just fine and dandy here. Rob, sorry, but mm, no, we don't need to be... <sighs> Yeah, that's another thing. Aliens fly by and they see that we're the Earth is already infected and they've put it under quarantine because it, it's infected, all right. Okay. I love this idea. What a brilliant young lady. Put that one over on mines as well. I have notifications. It's probably... Lots of people posting all kinds of shit in that against Zionism or whatever the heck page. I get a lot of notifications that people are posting in there. It's like, really? Really? <gasps> it's Cowboy. Hi, Cowboy Tech. I see you. Yay. It's not the anti-Zionism yada yada blah 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 that's, yeah. Mm. I have found some interesting things there, but for the most part, it's like, I just don't feel like going there. Okay. Bravo, young lady. Wow. See, Grammy? You helped me almost get all the way through. Almost. <laughs> And yes, Frumpy, if the earth was flat, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. <laughs> they would have. I have two cats. Trust me, I know. Little shits. I love them dearly. But, I. Okay, well, you know, seeing as how it's a wackadoodle Wednesday, i got to get to this one. I don't remember. I think it was, was it you, Rob Works, that shared this earlier about the uh, news.persopo.com? It's from June of 2017. Woman sues background check site after a husband uses site to catch her cheating. Did you post that, Rob? Or who posted that? Somebody posted it over on the RLM earlier today, and I saw that, and I went, oh, good luck with that. Apparently, Mary from Dallas, Texas, no, see, from Dallas, Texas, not me, filed a lawsuit against background check site uh, persopo.com this month in court, which was June of last year. In her lawsuit, she alleges that they provided her husband with confidential information about her. Her husband divorced her based off of this information, and she wants the company to pay. Nowhere in the lawsuit does it dispute if the information is accurate or not, nor that she was having an affair on her husband with multiple men. The case can be found on the Clark County website, case number, and yada, yada, yada. And the conservative Daily Post spoke to Mary's ex-husband, Frank, to figure out more about this strange situation. Frank had suspected his wife of cheating for a long time. She would constantly be gone for hours without answering her phone and never seemed to have an honest answer why she was gone. Frank had initially had enough to decide to start doing, or had finally had enough, to decide to start doing some research online. So, he found Persopo.com. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but that's how I'm doing it. It's a background check site that can give you all sorts of information about someone. To use it, all you need to do is type in a name and state, and the system goes to work, pulling together every possible piece of information on them. 
Now, they not it not only pulls from public records, but many different social and dating websites around the internet. It can also give you a full picture of someone's online activity almost instantly. And this is how Frank caught his wife Mary. More and more Americans are using online background check services and they use the service to scope out friends or family, teachers, co-workers, or anyone they feel like, either because they are cybernetic Gladys Kravitzes or they're just untrusting individuals or I, they don't have a life, apparently. I'm just not that curious. I mean, I'm curious about some things, but that kind of shit, you know, unless you give me reason to not trust you, I ain't. And even then, you got to really give me a good reason for me to want to start looking you up. Hmm. Apparently, searching is easy. All you have to do is type in a name in the state they live in. Instantly, you get access to a huge, a huge amount of data from criminal records, property records. Um, and in Frank's case, he also found out about quite a bit of online activity from his wife as well. So, hmm, apparently, excuse me, I yawn. It even included a screenshot of her Match.com profile where it states she is never married for relationship status. Liar, liar, pants on fire. After confronting her about the situation, Mary did admit to Frank about the affair. She stated that she had slept with at least four different men within the last 12 months, and Frank promptly filed for divorce. Mary's now stating that uh, this online search company, Persopo, ruined my life by revealing private information about me. No, you ruined your life, and they just found the dirt. That's your cybernetic dirty laundry, honey. She's currently seeking unspecified damages. So, darn, darn, honey, I don't feel one bit bad for you. I really don't. This is called You Brought It On Yourself. Dipstick woman. You know, if you did... And I I just don't get this. Why why don't people just file for divorce? I mean, if you're if you're wanting to go elsewhere, why not just file for divorce instead of traipsing around all over the place and then getting all butt hurt when they catch you? It's like dumbass, if you want out, just do the adult oh wait, no, there it is. I said it right there. Do the adult thing and get out. Ay. Ding dongs, ding dongs. <sighs> okay. What else do I have? There was something else. Okay. I'm not sure where I. Oh, I think I saw this on Twitter. It's from the DailySignal.com. Yeah, I did. Uh, this junk science approach to sexual assault cases would trample on rights of the accused. Apparently, several Democratic congressmen have introduced a bill in the House of Representatives that would award monetary grants to law enforcement and related agencies that use so-called trauma-informed investigation for handling cases of sexual violence and stalking. The money distributed under H.R. 4720 would directly fund training programs that instruct relevant personnel on the trauma-informed approach to crimes of sexual violence informed by the fundamentals of the neurobiology neurobiolo of trauma and the impact of trauma on victims. Okay, apparently H.R. 27 or 4720 pursues the admirable goal of promoting justice in the interest of victims. 
However, despite these good intentions, it fails to achieve that goal and instead promotes a scientifically unsound pseudoscience and a criminal justice theory completely at odds with well-established concepts of procedural due process. Congress should just reject this effort to fundamentally alter the role of impartial police investigator. So what is trauma-informed investigation? Well, it's uh, an offspring of the Start by Believing campaign launched in 2011 by End Violence Against Women International as part of its goal to transform the way we respond to sexual assault. Oh, this should be fun. As the name suggests, the basic premise of the campaign is to dramatically reconstruct the role of law enforcement officers, detectives, and other investigators of sexual assault by training them to focus on how the complaint, yeah, the complaint, complainant, please, edit, could be telling the truth despite evidence to the contrary. Oh, like that young man that got caught raping a young girl that was passed out by a dumpster by two young men who had to pull him off of her and he got six months because, well, this could adversely affect the rest of his life. As what, as if what he did is not going to adversely affect the young lady who was on the receiving end of his attentions, shall we say. Assholio. <sighs> Under this approach, investigators should no longer be neutral third-party fact-gatherers, but agents of the person alleging sexual assault. They should assume all complainants are genuine victims and must find ways of making even inconsistent, inaccurate, and exculpatory evidence support the complainant's allegations. Oh, this is not sounding good. Trauma-informed investigation theory attempts to cloak start by believing with an air of scientific credibility. Instructing investigators and educators of assault claims to consider the neurobiology of trauma and how it affects an alleged victim's behaviors and ability to recall information. See, now this is this is where it's going to get to be a bit of a sticky wicket because you already have ladies out there that are calling rape that obviously were not because they recanted later because there was absolutely no evidence. And there have been people that have gone to jail because someone lied and falsely accused them. All of this bickering and bantering, there's an awful lot of people out there that are honestly getting assaulted. And all this does is muddy the water and make it harder to get the actual pervs off the streets. <clears throat> Apparently, proponents of this theory claim that trauma such as being sexually assaulted, often causes a disabling psychological response that severely inhibits victims' memories of an event, limits their cognizance of time frames, and results in actions otherwise considered abnormal by a passive observer. Okay, speaking as someone who has been down this road... I got to tell you, details become very, very, and uh, you know, like that if you have something that you can see what time it is, uh, facial um, expressions, um, little things around you, everything is like, bam, permanent snapshot burned onto the back of your head. I can still see the time of the clock. So, and that's been 40 years ago. So, some, yeah, that stuff gets indelibly imprinted. So, you know, saying that it, it may fog things, it might for some, but uh, most of 
most people that I've spoken to know it's it's etched in stone. Apparently, in layman's terms, trauma-informed investigators are told to ignore standard red flags, such as inconsistent accounts, counterintuitive behavioral responses, and even factual wrong statements, because these things are normal from trauma victims. Mm, that is not the norm. No. In fact, because these are the exact type of responses expected of real victims, their presence should be interpreted as evidence that the complainant experienced psychological trauma and must be telling the truth. Mm, wow. This is going this is going to be a bit of a sticky wicket. As if we don't have enough junk science going on already. Oh. You really need to go on physical evidence and you really need to stop being dismissive. That's a lot of it. There's an awful lot of dismissiveness with this that I am just about out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and just share this for you guys to finish reading it. Onion. What's that? Oh, her online name was Here for Love and 69. <laughs> Wow, Grammy, thanks for that little input. Oh, well, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, also on lots of other RLM places, and later to be on the RLM YouTube channel. Thank you all for listening in on this Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday edition. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening or rest of your day, whatever time zone you happen to be in, whether you're on the upper or the lower part of the plan at. <laughs> I'm going to work that just because I know there's some people that it really irritates. And, you know, maybe it'll get you to go in there and look at it and debunk this shit or try to and maybe find other questions. Huh. Oh, well, until then, till Friday. I will catch y'all in the funny paper.